in the previous lecture we have started to deal with the problem of applications of Bragg's law. You have seen in the first lecture on application of Bragg's law, the determination of wavelength of X-rays using Bragg's law. Now, uh, we are going to discuss the most important uh, application of Bragg's law and this is regarding the discussion or you can say the analysis of crystal structure. How Bragg's law can be used to analyze the structure of a crystal, we will see in this lecture. And for this, I have actually taken the simplest example of the cubic crystal to see how we can find the structure of the cubic crystal using Bragg's law. Okay. In fact, uh, <coughs> to find the structure of crystal of lattice constant, let us say D, uh, this D is determined uh, using Bragg's law. You have seen this uh, fact in your earlier lecture. Actually, we determine this D uh, by using different planes of the crystal from the reflecting surface or you can say the Bragg's reflecting surface of X-rays from the known <coughs> of the wave known wavelength okay and uh, if you know the Bragg's reflecting surface and you incident the X-rays on that reflecting plane and X-ray gets uh, reflected then knowing for a particular order of reflection or diffraction the wavelength of x-rays we can determine the crystal structure and as i have told you earlier that in this lecture we will see or <coughs> we will concern only for the discussion or the analysis of the structure of cubic crystal by using bragg's law as you know there are three sets of cubic planes of atoms in a cubic uh, crystal and in these figures I have shown those planes here. You can see the first figure. In this first figure I have shown a plane ADEF. You can see this is figure number one and which, in which I have shown a plane by the shaded region ADEF and you know you have learned earlier in terms of uh, <coughs> Miller indices, the planes which is parallel to the plane ADEF, that those are represented by the Miller indices 1, 0, 0. Okay. Then we will <coughs> we can see the second plane is the plane ABGF, as you can see in this figure number two and all those planes which are parallel to these this plane abgf okay actually this plane can be represented by the miller indices 100 as you have learned earlier okay and uh, also we can determine what will be the interplanar spacing or interplanar distance for the parallel planes 100 zero zero. actually that distance we will denote by the symbol d100 zero zero. and similarly uh, the separation between the parallel planes abgf marked by the miller indices 110 one that will be represented by d110 okay the <coughs> third plane which is marked in this third figure this is actually the plane ABC as you can see and its parallel planes. As you can see from this figure in terms of Miller indices, this plane ABC can be represented by the plane 1, 1, 1 and the interplanar spacing for this plane will be denoted by the symbol D11. Okay. So all these things for your convenience 
I have actually <coughs> written here as you can see this is your in first figure you have seen the plane ADEF and its parallel plane and this plane is called 100 in terms of Miller indices and the distance between such parallel planes is denoted by D100 okay similarly in second figure you have seen the plane ABGF and its parallel planes and this is represented by the Miller indices 110 and <coughs> the distance between the two parallel planes such parallel planes will be represented by D110 and in third figure you have seen the plane ABC uh, <coughs> and uh, the distance between these parallel planes is represented by D11 okay now uh, as uh, you know that according to the uh, structure of cubic crystal there are three types of cubic crystal and uh, those three types you know are known as simple cubic which is also called primitive cubic crystal the second one is called bcc which means body centered cubic crystal and the third one is fcc which is called face centered cubic crystal actually <coughs> in case of the simple cubic crystal you know the atoms are only at the eight corners of the cube as you can see in this first figure okay this is actually the simple cubic crystal here the atoms are located only at the eight corners not anywhere else okay but uh, in case of body centered cubic uh, crystal you know the atoms are at the eight corners but apart from those atoms there is an atom also at the center of this cube which I have marked here you can see this uh, small sphere which I have shown at the center of this uh, cube in the figure number 2 and this is the structure of the body centered cubic crystal okay and when you talk about the <coughs> face centered cubic crystal you know apart from the atoms at the eight corners of this cube there is also atoms located at the centers of each face of the cube as you can see in this figure I have shown this is a <coughs> this is an atom at the center of this face this is another atom this is another atom this is another atom and uh, these and these are also atoms at the center of the faces so these are the structure of the <coughs> three types of cubic crystals that is simple cubic which is also called primitive cubic crystal and base centered sorry <coughs> body centered and face centered cubic crystal okay now uh, as you have learned earlier that in simple cubic lattice the distance between the two parallel planes marked by the Miller indices HKL if you denote that interplanar spacing by the symbol DHKL then in my previous lecture I have explained that this DHKL is equal to A divided by a square root of H square plus K square plus L square you can remember this formula because you have already learned uh, this formula in my earlier lecture okay so from <coughs> by the use of this formula now in case of simple cubic lattice that is SC lattice you can obtain the interplanar separations between the uh, three sets of parallel between the parallel planes which I have uh, which I have just explained earlier you have seen that in cubic crystal there is a plane which is denoted by the symbol 100 and the distance between such two parallel planes is denoted by the symbol D100 so what will be this D100 you can obtain from this uh, general result here <coughs> you can see 
when you write uh, the plane by 1 0 0 it means h is equal to 1 k is equal to 0 and l is equal to 0 so we will substitute h equal to 0 here and k and l will be substituted 0 so d100 from this formula will be what this will be a divided by root over 1 square plus 0 square plus 0 square and that will be equal to simply what a now the distance between two parallel planes marked by the miller indices 110 which is denoted by the symbol d110 what will be that in this case you can see the Miller index <coughs> H is 1, K is 1 and L is 0. So that will be substituted again in this formula and we will get the value of D110 and that will be A divided by root over 1 square plus 1 square plus 0 square. So this will be simply equal to A over root 2. Okay. Now <coughs> the separation between two parallel planes marked by the Miller indices 1 1 1 which is denoted by D 1 1 that will be what that will be a divided by 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square square root and this will be simply a by root 3. So in this way we have uh, we can obtain uh, the interplanar separations D 1 0 0 D 1 1 0 and D 1 1 1. So, in case of simple cubic lattice, if you want to find the ratio of these interplanar separations, what will be that? You can see the ratio of D100 is to D110 is to D111. That will be what? That will be simply equal to A is to A over root 2 is to A over root 3 and since a is common factor so the simplest ratio will be 1 is to 1 by root 2 is to 1 by root 3 so in this way <coughs> we know that in case of simple cubic lattice the this ratio is simply equal to 1 is to 1 by root 2 is to 1 over root 3 okay Actually, in the similar manner, in case of BCC lattice and FCC lattice, we can also find this ratio. In case, in case of BCC lattice, it is found that uh, the ratio of D110, D1, <coughs> D0, D100, D110 and D111, this is found 1 is to root 2 is to 1 over root 3. It is found in this case and similarly in case of FCC lattice the same ratio is obtained and this is found to be 1 is to 1 over root 2 is to 2 over root 3 okay I have not uh, obtained this by the calculation but you can remember it okay now <coughs> this value is obtained from that formula <coughs> but now we will see how Bragg's law can determine that a given uh, cubic crystal is either FCC or either it is BCC or it is either FCC. We can determine it. For this, uh, let us consider a particular order of diffraction. For simplicity, we consider the first order diffraction uh, for the maximum intensity and we consider that in case of uh, uh, the three sets of parallel planes, let us say 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1, 1, we consider that for n equal to 1, the glancing angle are theta 1, theta 2 and theta 3 for a given wavelength lambda of x-ray, okay, for first order. Then you know, according to Bragg's law, 2d sin theta is equal to n lambda. This is Bragg's law. So if you are talking about uh, the reflection from the plane 
<coughs> d uh, plan 100 zero zero. then we will write it 2d100 zero zero. and for this we have uh, we have considered that the glancing angle is theta 1 so we will write sin theta 1 and since we are considering first order uh, <coughs> maxima so n will be 1 so this will be simply equal to lambda so for this first plane we write Bragg's law in this way for first order of maxima 2d100 zero zero sin theta 1 equal to lambda and uh, as for this uh, reflection from the second plane 110 we have considered that the interplanar separation is d110 so Bragg's law for this will be written as 2d110 sin theta 2 equal to lambda because we have considered that for the <coughs> for the reflection from plane 110 the glancing angle is theta 2 for first order maxima and similarly for first order maxima for the reflection of x-ray from plane 111 we can write the Bragg's law in this way 2d111 sin theta 3 equal to lambda okay here theta 3 we have assumed this is glancing angle for the x-rays reflected from the planes 111 in <coughs> for first order maxima okay now from this result if we want to find the ratio of uh, these interplanar separations that is d100 d110 d111 what will be that you can <coughs> easily see that uh, ratio will be what that ratio you can find that 2 will is a common factor so that will cancel out so d100 is to d110 is to d111 what will be this this will be lambda divided by sin theta 1 is to lambda divided by sin theta 2 is to lambda divided by sin theta 3 since lambda is a common factor so this ratio will be simply equal to 1 over sin theta 1 is to 1 over sin theta 2 is to 1 over sin theta 3 okay so i have written here you can see that this ratio d11 sorry d100 is to d110 is to d111 this is equal to 1 over sin theta 1 is to 1 over sin theta 2 is to 1 over sin theta 3 so in this way if in experiment for a given crystal you obtain <coughs> the value of theta 1 theta 2 and theta 3 from experiment then you can easily find what will be this ratio if uh, the value of theta 1 theta 2 and theta 3 are measured in experiment <coughs> for first order maxima from a from the three uh, set three parallel three planes marked by 100 110 and 111 then it can be easily obtained okay actually bragg has obtained the values of these theta 1 theta 2 and theta 3 in his experiment for a particular crystal kcl so here i am just citing the example which was <coughs> example of the crystal kcl that is potassium chloride uh, which was actually uh, which was actually obtained by bragg himself actually in bragg's experiment it was found that for first order maxima from these three crystal uh, for the reflection from these three crystal planes of x-ray bragg has obtained that theta 1 is 5 degree 23 minute theta 2 is 7 degree 37 minute and theta 3 is 9 degree 23 minute 
these are actually experimental data which was obtained by Bragg himself in his experiment. Okay. So if you are talking about uh, the crystal of KCL, then you can obtain what will be the value of this ratio. That is ratio of D100, D110 and D111. You can see this will be simply 1 over sine 5 degree 23 minute is to 1 over sine 7 degree 37 minute and is to 1 over 9 <coughs> sine 9 degree 23 minute. Actually these are not a standard values so we will see the table of sine and we will substitute the value. After substituting the values of all these signs we obtain that this is equal to 1 is to 1 over root 2 is to 1 over root 3. Okay. So in case of KCL crystal when you obtain uh, the, this ratio you find that uh, the ratio is like this. Now let us see this ratio uh, which uh, we have obtained is just uh, same as you have obtained the the same ratio in case of the simple cubic lattice. So since the ratio is found to be equal to <coughs> the ratio, ratio in case of simple cubic lattice, so we can conclude that actually this KCL crystal definitely will be simple cubic. So in this way we can analyze the structure of KCL crystal using this Bragg's law. Okay. So I have written here you can see this ratio is for simple cubic type crystal and thus we conclude that a structure of KCL is of cubic type. Okay. So uh, <coughs> this was actually a very simple example and uh, in examination uh, definitely a question is asked how we can use Bragg's law to determine the crystal structure. Particular crystal is not specified. When particular crystal will be specified then answer writing will be very tough because uh, you cannot get the data for all the crystals but uh, in examination in general way question is simply asked as discuss the, discuss the application of Bragg's law in determining the crystal structure. So you can remember this data and you can write the an appropriate answer in your examination okay so hope uh, this lecture will be very useful for your examination purpose and thank you very much